Who wants to learn the distributive property? All right, so what we have with the distributive property is you're gonna have a term outside of two terms on the inside of grouping symbols, AKA parentheses. So right here, what I've written out is A times the sum of B plus C. Now, what you're gonna do with the distributive property, the best technique you can use is draw rainbow lines to each term. That's one helpful reminder that this outside term of A needs to be multiplied by both of the inner terms, B and C. So when I multiply an A times a B, I'm going to be left with a A, B. If I multiply an A times a C, I'm going to be left with an A, C. Okay, now that's just nothing but variables right there. Sometimes variables can be confusing. That's the algebraic example. Okay, now if I wanted to throw some numbers at you, how would this look with some numbers? Five on the outside of X plus three. Notice we're now dealing with two terms on the inside of the parentheses of the grouping symbols that we cannot combine. We cannot combine an X and a three through addition. It's an impossible feat. Okay, so we can't combine these. Therefore, they're looked at as two separate terms. And we need to use the distributive property to um, simplify this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my rainbow lines again. 5 needs to go to the x. 5 needs to go to the 3. We're going to multiply those out, and we're going to get our result. So if I were to multiply 5 times x, I'm going to be left with 5x. If I'm going to multiply 5 times 3, I'm going to be left with a 15. And this would be the most simplified example of the expression, 5x plus 15. 5 times x makes 5x. 5 times 3 makes 15. Okay? Where do kids sometimes get lost? Negative values. Okay? So let's talk about 3 on the outside of an x minus a 4. That is a negative term. That minus 4 is negative. So what you're going to say is 3 times x and 3 times negative 4. And we have to have the wherewithal that a positive times a negative will come out as a negative result. So the first step, 3 times x is going to give me 3x. And 3 times negative 4 is going to give me a negative. And 4 times 3 or 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. So I'm going from nothing but variables to all positive values. Now we have a negative stuck in there, OK? Where do I always see kids make mistakes? When do you really use the distributive property? You're going to use it as a step in just about everything you do in algebra when you have long extensions. Okay, You have to break things down, simplify them to work things across from one side to another of an equation sign. Um, so you're going to get to a point where you're going to see the distributive property quite frequently in your algebra classes, and you need to have this skill pretty dialed in. Okay, um, I'm going to show you one more example. I won't erase this. I'll leave it up. But I'm going to show you an example of a scenario, a type of problem that I would ask my algebra students to solve and where I constantly see an error or a mistake. Okay, so if I were asking them to solve this equation, let's just say um, 3x minus parentheses x plus 2 equals 8. There's only one number in the entire world that we can plug in for x to make this equation true, okay? And that's what I would ask my students to do, figure out what x is, okay? What's that one number that we can plug in here and here that would come out to equal 8 at the end, okay? Now, what they're going to need to do is, first and foremost, their very first step in this problem is to break everything down on the left side of this equation. Now, I'm getting into some stuff that's beyond just using the distributive property. We're going to actually be solving a multi-step equation here. But that's good practice for you in seeing where this skill needs to be used. Okay, so first and foremost, I see kids all the time, they'll either want to take this 3x and multiply it by both terms. That is not what's being multiplied. That 3x is a term all in itself. What we're actually multiplying or distributing in this case is this negative value. Okay, or this symbol of negative of a negative term. Now, what I like to call it is a ghost one. It's like a Casper. It's hiding. Okay, when you do not see a number after that negative symbol, there really is a number. We just don't write it down, and it is a negative one. 
That's why I call it the Casper one, okay, the friendly ghost. So negative 1 times both of these terms, all a negative 1 does when you multiply it by something is it flips the sign. It turns a positive into a negative. If it already was a negative, it's going to turn it into a positive. So if I take negative 1 times x, I'm going to get a negative x as opposed to a positive x as you see on the inside, okay? If I take a negative 1 times a positive 2, all it does is it turns that positive 2 into a negative 2. I still have the 8, and then I can't forget to bring down this 3x. So what I just used was the distributive property in an example where you don't see that one. There's 3x minus, and then in grouping symbols or parentheses, we have x plus 2. All the time I'll see my students want to multiply that 3x times both terms. Just a sneak peek into what you're going to get into in, a, in an area where my kids typically do make mistakes. Okay, But these are the basics of it. Okay, just distributing that outside term to both inner terms. 5 times x makes 5x. Five, 5 times 3 makes 15. Don't forget to do it to both of them. A lot of time I'll see a kid write down 5x plus 3. If you can figure out what they did there, they just forgot to multiply it by the second term. That's why these lines come in such handy. Okay, um, 3 times x gives me 3x. 3 times negative 4 gives me a negative 12. Okay. There's the basics of the distributive property. You're going to see it a lot in your algebra classes, so make sure you're prepared for it, and good luck on your upcoming test.